The trip to Calabria with Kit this past week is close to its conclusion, but we have a whole day set aside to explore the city of Catania, here on the eastern side of Sicily, just south of the massive volcano Etna. To begin with, we'll wander around the centre of the city with this lovely open square. Off to one side is a maze of lovely bars and cafes. The brightly coloured umbrellas are a neat and clever way to add colour and reduce the heat and glare of the sun. I've seen similar in Camden, London, but somehow here with the extra heat and brightness, the whole place is vibrant. Of course, we stop for a drink and have found an empty table in the corner bar overlooking the square. These are arancini and are Italian rice balls that are stuffed with a range of extras but usually include mozzarella cheese and then coated with breadcrumbs and deep fried. They are a traditional Sicilian cuisine and popular with the tourists. It's tempting to stay longer at the cafe table and have another beer, but we have places to visit. On one side of the square is the Palace of the Elephant. I'm not sure the relevance of elephants, but it does seem to be a historic link to elephants with this square. Inside the entrance to the palace, there's an old carriage, fine and really well kept. I've mentioned ice cream several times on this tour and here we'll enjoy a last one in Italy for this trip. For our trip, Kit had researched about an old railway line, the Ferrovia Circumetna, which used special old railway carriages on a line running up from Catania and along most of the way around Etna. Unfortunately, as we knew while we were planning the trip, this being Sunday, the trains wouldn't be running, but there is a hope that we'll see some of the trains and the station. Okay, well, this is all so next, we head to Borgo, an outer area of Catania and linked with the underground metro line. These metro trains are just like most around the world for sure, but the bright yellow details do remind me of the Newcastle metro system.
As we predicted, the line is all quiet today, but that gives me the opportunity to explore more than I would be able to on a running day. The line opened in 1895 to link Catania around the volcano up to the town of Riposto using a narrow gauge track of 950mm or 3 foot 1 and 3 eighths of some 68 miles in length. This is the old Borgo station and retains much of its old historic charm just as it was when it was opened. A lot of time and money has been spent keeping the line and the stations in good condition. On the corner here, tucked out of the way, is one of the old steam engines, number 14, built in 1909. It worked on the line for decades, presumably until the 1960s or 70s, when the first diesel units were introduced. There are no barriers or signs stopping me from wandering further, so while there are no trains running today, let's take a cheeky look at these trains. These orange and green diesel multiple units date back a while, but I'm not sure what their history is. It seems that they are now just left here awaiting their fate. It's sad to see them in this tired state. I hope they keep at least one working set to use on the line in the future. Right here, the line just ends. Now, that is, but not in the past. Originally, the tracks continued on for another couple of miles, right along to the coast. But as the metro line was built in the 1990s, these tracks were removed and the route relayed underground and included as part of the metro line. Borgo station then is now the end of the old line. Mm -hmm. 
On the side here is the main operating depot. These modern units were introduced in 2017, as far as I can work out. They look more like trams than trains, but I'm not sure if they meet modern standards of accessibility. But now, back at the metro station, we have a little more time to explore the line underground. I can't pass by the opportunity to ride the full length of the line, especially as we had to buy a ticket each with multiple train rides included, and we'll even end up with one spare ticket at the end of the day. Borgo is about halfway along the line and we head for the Nesma end first. Back along the line, we finally alight at Giovanni 23 station. I'm not sure what the relevance of the number is, and it also looks odd that this metro station, cited to serve the main centre of Catania, does not have a direct link up to the main line Centrale station.
Although we're heading back out to the airport station, we have a few minutes spare to look at this old steam engine parked at the end of the station here. I spotted it yesterday from the window of our train. Initially, it's easy to assume that it's just another old steam engine, a typical tank 060 of the period. But no, not at all. Passing around the front, I can see that all the conrod and valve gear linkages just seem strange. This engine actually has twin cylinders on each side and operated as a double expansion engine. Clever indeed, making the most of the steam's expansive energy. Fantastic for powerful slow running, which I assume was the way it was on the lines at the time. Number 12 is a narrow gauge loco, one of a set built from 1909. Most were assigned work on the mineral lines around Sicily, some of which dealt with sulphur extraction and other passenger lines which have now closed. I don't know if number 12 operated on the line around Etna, as the loco has the rack and pinion gear wheels installed. But the afternoon is moving on, and so Kit and I find our way back aboard the POP train service to the airport area. I hope you've enjoyed tagging along with us today. From here in Catania, thanks for watching and bye for now.